So this is a BMW N63 uh, V8 twin turbo, uh, pulled out of an E70 X5 50i. Um, the vehicle is burning excessive amounts of oil, so the engine's been pulled out uh, to have the valve stem seals replaced and inspect further to see if there's any other wear. Um, and I'm just showing you now with a quick walk around of the um, size of the engine, the state that it's in as per its removal from the vehicle and the amount of strip down that we're going to have to do will take place shortly. So we'll just give you a quick uh, walk around of the engine and uh, we'll keep you updated step by step um, as we go through the dismantle and what we find. BMW N63 uh, in for valve stem seals. Um, as you can see, all the valve gear is out on this bank and all the valve springs, etc. The valve stem seals are just worn and are leaking down into the exhaust, being burnt through the engine. Using a leak cylinder leakage tester to keep the valves pressurized. It's not on at the moment, but just so we can take the valve springs off. So I'm just grabbing hold of the, uh, the valve by the stem and rocking it side to side inside the valve guide, and you can see that is a very excessive amount of free play. Um, this is the reason why the engine is burning this excess amount of oil, approximately 3 litres per thousand kilometres. Um, so the valve guides are worn and they have uh, worn through the valve stem seals a bit early due to this. These have already been done once before, but the guides weren't replaced. So as we can see, that is very excessive and we're going to need to pull the heads off at this point. So we've got a new valve stem seal on the left and our worn one on the right. We'll start our dismantling. Um, as you can see, we've got to pull the turbos off and uh, all the exhaust manifolds, etc. So we'll start with these heat shields. We now can obviously see the catalytic converters and the turbochargers. So you can actually now see the depth of the uh, dismantling that's going to be involved in this repair. So I've got the bank one turbocharger removed here. You can see uh, into the catalytic converter now, uh, the oil feed lines removed and then the oil drained down into the valley there. Now this is just an o-ring fitment into the valley and we can see our oil staining as the uh, turbo intake pipes were actually leaking uh, due to swollen seals. I've got the bank 2 turbo charger off now also. Um, and we will proceed to start pulling the catalytic converters and then the exhaust manifolds. All V-band fittings, uh, so very simple and flexible in their installation. So we've got the catalytic converter for bank one unbolted off the gearbox mount and uh, off of the out of the valley. Um, they've got the inlet manifold off as well. As you can see, there is oil dripping out of the inlet ports, and it's hard to pick up in the camera, but there is carbon buildup, which will also need to be cleaned out. We've got the chain drive off on the bank one, and the tension is out. Both Vanos cam pulleys are out, um, as they are out to get the camshaft out, and now the cylinder head is finally removed. We can see the crowns of the pistons and see the amount of carbon buildup. You can actually clearly see now the amount of oil this thing was burning.
and then just a look at the underside of the cylinder head and another uh, flip side of how much play there is in these valves into the guides so our side to side we can just see them moving so much um, which is just now clear night and day of um, why this thing was burning so much oil like I say this was repaired pre previously at a BMW dealership um, but they unfortunately did not replace the valve guides so it was a basically a waste of time doing the repair in the past it only a, was a patch repair um, and now it's going to be rectified correctly so look at that movement there there should be virtually next to no movement there at all they should just be able to have a bit of free play just for expansion but there should be not that amount of free play I can just see all that carbon build up again and the whites on the exhaust valves all that is, is signs of uh, of oil being burnt through this engine so we'll send these heads away they'll have new guides pressed in and we'll also clean all these piston grounds up to get rid of the excess carbon we won't be removing them and, and cleaning them um, completely but we'll just remove what's in, in, in excess um, this bottom end is serviceable, there's no damaging or scoring to the cylinder bores. Uh, we purely have a top end problem, which is a, a common issue with these N63s. All just flaking away. There's a quick view of the engine with just a short block, so um, no cylinder heads on, we'll clean the decks up and whatnot just to get them ready for new heads and head gaskets um, yeah no issues here again on this bank that dirt and dust and bit of sand that's fallen in uh, that's just from where the heads have come off and now we're looking into these inlet manifolds we can clearly see the amount of oil that's been passing through uh, from the from the breather system with the amount of uh, uh, leakage past those valves um, these inlet manifolds are full of oil so these will be drained over a period of time and they'll be flushed through with solvents to make sure the, the oil is um, removed from the inlet any oil that's in here that's in excess um, will contribute to carbon build up inside the, uh, the inlet ports which obviously on a direct injection is something we want to try and avoid um, yeah, so we'll clean these manifolds out, but I'll, we'll t I'll tip these up now just so you can see the actual quantity of the engine oil that's actually inside these manifolds. Now this oil that's coming out now isn't the full amount, it's just the amount that I'm allowing to pour out. I don't want to make a complete mess all over the bench as these parts are going to sit while the heads are, are being reconditioned so you can just get an idea of the amount of oil that we've got to come out. So this guide is broken. We're just pulling the timing covers off to access and replace. The front crank pulley is off. The two sections that house the pulley for the belts and then the inner vibration damper. It's a very tight centre bolt. The water pump off over here. Power steering pump and tension. So we just run round under the sump bolts, under the bolts around the outside. So now the front end is off the timing case. Um, so we've just got three gas units in the three locations now we can get this guide off and replace it with a new one and we'll reassemble the chains obviously we make sure staying on the crank Put some sealant around the corners of the sump into the block there, and then we'll reassemble 
new crank bolt, etc. So the front cover is back on. We've left the crank seal out so we can see the timing chains are on the going on the sprockets properly when we time the engine. And then we'll put the crank seal under the, the, the bottom pulley back on. So we're basically ready to start prepping for the installation of the cylinder heads. So I've cleaned the crowns of the pistons up, give them a quick wipe over before we put the heads on. Um, same on the other bank. Just heaps of carbon that was on there from it burning oil. Don't wouldn't normally touch it, but because there's so much carbon, I just like to get the, the crowns a little bit cleaner, basically. So yeah, we'll um, clean these gasket surfaces and get the heads ready to go on. So we've got the decks of the block cleaned up. Ready for a new head gasket. Pistons are clean. Time chain guide is installed. Bit of silicon on the transition points between the where the covers join. Same on the other bank. Load all the head bolt holes out, load all the cylinders out. Transition points again. Recondition the heads. gaskets ready to go on. So just got the cylinder heads on now from um, just the head gaskets on. Fed the um, chains and the guides up through the hole in the cylinder heads. We've got the head bolts in as well with the washers. These two front head bolts down here. Just the small reusable really ones. This side I've also got the head on. Got it where the cam shafts are also in. This is the guide for the high pressure fuel pump, which is also the bearing um, caps for the exhaust cam shaft. Locking tools in. This is the timing chain just sitting on the variators. These are sided, so one's in there and one's exhaust. E for in there, A for exhaust, and they're marked on the rears. Yeah, we're almost ready to time this thing up. German. And then these are the cam caps on the inlet. We've then got E's. The numbers read upside down from the side of the bank, so the side of the engine. Caps read upside down. That's the same on both sides. Let's start obviously one across the five. Cams all in. Um, chains on, just got to put the central bolts in. The timing tools are applied on this side. Locking the camshafts as we can see. Just a quick view of the part number for anyone interested. And the position of the lobes. This one's at 9 o'clock when looking at the front of the engine. This one's pointing directly down. It's 
all goes in place of the tensioner. As we tighten this screw, you'll see in the background now that, that pushes on the, the guide rail. Tightens the chain. Tighten the central bolts when it's at the correct time and with all the locking tools in. We put copper grease on the inside of the bolts, it's just extra on the outside here, as per the BMW guidelines as their repair instructions. So on the inside face of the bolt, it's got copper grease. So as we can see, we're all timed up and assembled, like we were saying before. Put the water pump on now. Started building the valley back up. Timing covers are on. Rock cover is on. Manifolds back on. New gaskets. These turbos are going to go on. So with both turbos on, uh, catalytic converter on one side, high pressure fuel pump, got my lambda wiring. Still got this mess of uh, wiring harness to sort out. Just got to whack this rock cover on. As you can see, V-band clamps holding the turbo chargers onto the manifolds, and V-bands holding the uh, catalytic converter on the back of the turbos. Oil lines, 14mm banjo bolt on the top, easily removed. And remove the uh, E8 bolts that go with it. Um, and then just leave the lines with the engine, um, and then the oil drains just o-ring into the block down the bottom there.